Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. I'm here with another episode of Be Real. And this time I'm definitely not shying away from slightly more controversial topics. I'm going to talk about Louis Vuitton, Hermes and Chanel in totally different aspects of that. And you will see as we go through, they're things that I've been asked about. So rather than doing a Q&A, they're the things that I've chatted with YouTube friends and Instagram followers and stuff in the last sort of two weeks. I've been asked repeatedly about these three things and so I've just boiled it down into three topic areas to talk about but they do come from things people have asked me. I also put out an appeal today on my Instagram for Q&A questions and I got a couple but they were really different from these topics and I think this is a self-contained kind of three strand three topic video so I'll save those questions and I will promise to answer them in a later Q&A. Okay let's get straight in. Purse on fleek what do I think? I wasn't going to comment on this and over time I thought it was just really interesting. I had thoughts, things that maybe other people hadn't pointed out, my overall feelings about it rather than dissecting every little aspect of what she did. I just wanted to give my general feelings because so many people have asked me, like several people have asked me. So I feel that I was aware of Person Fleet before she did this video saying that her meza treated her badly and made her cry. I had actually really enjoyed her video uh, videos and had looked up her videos for information on Hermes leathers when I was thinking of getting a customised Bastia coin purse um, and just like the, her experiences and her collection, I just enjoyed her channel. I didn't particularly, I'll be honest, didn't particularly warm to her communication style, but that's like a separate issue. We're all different. I'm sure there are plenty of people who don't like my communication style. So... But I, I thought she had varied content and she was interesting. So she basically in that video, to try and summarise it in a very small way, because we all know at this point, but there might be some people who don't. She didn't like the way that she felt she'd played their game, the Hermes game that we, lots of people have referred to as the Hermes journey. She'd actually been offered and got a couple of dream bags, quota bags, i.e. I would include in that Constance, Birkin and Kelly. Um, and she felt like there were, she was, she was very, um, intensely communicating with her essay about, and I'm not going to go into, she had different essays that left and so she felt like she had to keep starting again with someone new, but the long and the short of it is she did, she wasn't getting what she wanted and she was upping the ante over a time and did things that are just a no, no. And I'm going to give you an analogy in a minute. She was writing frequent, very involved emails that went into complex wish lists of every little thing she wanted. Not just the dream bags, but I want this charm, this Rodeo, these Oran sandals, but in this colour. Could you let me know? Are you thinking you're getting any in? It was just very involved, very intense. Secondly, when she and she was also making appointments and going into the store and she was buying items in between and she kind of then did a couple of cardinal sins. She quoted at the essay, hey, my, she quoted her spend. My spend to date has been this much and yet you're not giving me a dream bag. Someone else that she was aware of got a bag in a colour that she was after and it was like she compared her journey to their journey. Again, there's all, there's ins and outs where she could say, no, you know, the essay brought it up, whatever. I'm not here to dissect. But she was just very intense with, with this essay she talked about linked selling so she actually overtly said i've spent this so when am i going to get rewarded with a bag and the long and the short of it is that in the end someone from head office contacted her and said that the person felt uncomfortable it was a health and safety issue why she couldn't work with her anymore she wasn't banned she could go into the store but could she please work with someone else now, when that happens, you're going to experience strong emotion. I would too. But instead of saying, I'm angry with this business, they shouldn't have called me. This was inappropriate. It should have been this store manager. It should have been the essay themselves, whatever, ins and outs. If someone's telling you that your behaviour means that someone at that business doesn't want to interact with you anymore, and actually good for Hermes that they did something around their staff welfare, however Mel's take on it, there's no smoke without fire. And if somebody told me, if I got a call from Chanel and the, say the essay that I had dealt with regularly was like, please, you can come in, but don't ask for whoever. 
I that's a red flag. I would be like, OK, I need to go over everything and see where I went wrong. Because these people want to deal with the public. They want to sell products to the public. They're not in the business of not wanting to serve you. So something's becoming a problem or a potential problem for them to do that. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I don't care about whether she's reselling her items, whether she's reselling packaging. I think for me, I'm just thinking about her communication in that video to us as an audience, her communication with her mares and where it landed her. There are lots of different takes on the Hermes journey. One is that you have to build up a sales history with one boutique who they, they know you, they have a record of what you've bought, or even one particular essay at that boutique. And that there's a relationship between, you know, linked selling. You have to buy fine jewellery, you have to buy this and that and the other, and then they'll kind of look kindly on you and allocate you a bag. Some people say that's not true. It's more about going to the right boutique at the right time. Get on a plane, go to France, ask, get an appointment. You might get lucky. Other people say, no, it's different everywhere. It's just luck, blah, blah, blah. My opinion, and I have not scored or been offered, directly offered a bag. But my experience is that I went into Hermes in Bond Street in London on three occasions and happened to be served by this assistant manager, a Russian lady who is courteous respectful and lovely and I never asked for a bag I didn't particularly have the budget or know what I wanted yet or whatever I just went in to buy smaller items and had natural natural this is the key point rapport with this lady I wasn't being friendly or over disclosing or anything that could potentially make her feel uncomfortable to meet to get somewhere I was just naturally had a rapport with this lady and that's the thing about rapport it either happens or it doesn't and I think that Mel has misinterpreted her how her relationship with this essay is going and therefore she was blindsided when it all went wrong and she couldn't get what she wanted. Um, there's lots of debate around. OK, let's just try because I'm, I'm, I'm a real waffler. Let's just try and break it down. You interact with these people in this in this business environment it's a business relationship i saw a video um by a really nice fair kind assessment of the situation from lux purse love one of the things she did agree with mel about was that you can have genuine friendships with essays but that develops naturally over time and if you end up seeing that person outside of work that's a private thing between the two of you that naturally arises i have become good friends with my hairstylist we see each other outside of his salon. That happened over several years that we gradually had more in-depth conversations or whatever, and I can't remember who suggested it first, but it, it, you can't contrive it to, to get what you want. That's not how human relationships work. Um, I feel that in her first video, Mel was very emotional. She's very intensely attached to the idea of scoring certain bags. She's linking them to life effects, life events, both positive and negative, pregnancy, childbirth, wedding anniversaries, birthdays, getting over um, a skin cancer that she had on her forehead. And she's sort of saying, you know, this is going on. It would really make me feel better if you could get me this bag. That's a no, no. Also, and as I said, I don't really want to go too far into it, but if you add up all of the factors, her communication, the, the frequency and intensity and length of them, the personal over-disclosure, the kind of beggy or entitled stuff that crept in, then also maybe because of her behaviour and then maybe looking into her a bit more, she's been selling the Hermes boxes and she's resold some bags that allocated dream or I can't remember what they call them, like dream bags or quota bags didn't work out for her and she sold them. I think all of it together, I don't think she was ever going to be offered another quota bag through that store. So that is one thing that is right. She's now stepping back. She won't shop there anymore because she feels slighted. And with that, I, I completely support you would feel uncomfortable. It's meant to be a joy and a pleasure to go in and feel pampered and have the in-store experience and walk out with something special. And if she feels that that's not going to happen again, then she's right to walk away. But I just wish that maybe some of the feedback she got on the first video before she cut the comments off, she had maybe more genuinely reflected on how she what her part was in all of that secondly i think she did another video a couple of weeks afterwards which was uh 
react, replying to responses like mine and other people's, you know, feedback. And she was very defensive and you could see there was no genuine reflection. And that's a shame. She doesn't seem to have learned anything from the experience, particularly. You know, when people say uh, the apology goes, I'm sorry, but you made me be rude to you. <laughs> it's not really taking responsibility if there's a but there. So I don't know. I just hope she moves on and, and her relationship with designer things and her mares maybe decreases in intensity and she focuses on other things. But I think there's a chance that she's just switched her obsessiveness around her mares onto Chanel now because her recent content's all been about Chanel and getting quite in depth again. Um, but the main reason I wanted to talk about the purse on fleek stuff was that in that second video, there were comments. The ones I saw, I'm sure there were some nasty ones that she deleted and blocked right away. But the comments that I saw were very gently put, mild criticism saying, I, for example, there was one lady who said, I'm a long term subscriber. I love your channel. I love you. But, you know, in that first video, I think you did go a bit wrong. And that's why this happened to you, maybe. And maybe you, you shouldn't have done this and shouldn't have she was basically either referring people to a video she put a link to a video that says like shut the f up and then or was just really hostile borderline abusive saying you don't need to watch my videos then you c u n t no we as people however tiny a tiny channel like mine right up to bigger channels who have 100,000 subscribers if we're talking around the culture which people constantly refer to of online abuse and you're a content creator, then don't do it yourself. You weaken your position. And I will never be abusive in a video. And I will never be abusive in my replies to people. If I'm really uncomfortable with something someone says, I can ignore it. I can delete it. I can block it. I can, um, what's the right word? Report something that I think is really serious. But I don't need to be um, cursing and using foul language. And I had a real problem with that. A real problem with that. Because she is constantly referring to bullying and trolling that she's receiving. And she's doing that same behaviour to others who are not even being nasty. And that's why I wanted to talk about this. Because I really believe that there's two issues going on here. There's trolling. Threatening foul language sexual in your like all kinds of horrible things how people kind of get at you on social media and then there's this thing where people who don't want to hear criticism dress that up as trolling and it's not so i could go onto a big luxury youtuber's channel like i have sometimes i've i've seen i don't watch her anymore because she triggers me i've gone onto a lydia millen video where she's complaining and being very entitled and negative and i see in the comments a young girl, she's, oh, I'm 16, I'm saving up for my first bag. And I really like that bag you showed today. How much is it? You didn't share the price and I can't find it on their website. And Lydia's reaction to this girl, I remember one time, was just really abusive. Because she got triggered and assumed that the girl was being passive aggressive. She wasn't, you could tell from the comment. She was like, oh yeah, you're just getting at me. How much do you spend? My bag was thousands of pounds. I know what you're doing. And... I don't like that. I really, I'm sure I'm going to piss people off by saying this, but um, I think it's time that if you, if you make any kind of content or anything on social media, you are inviting comment and dialogue. People say like, let me know your, your thoughts in the comments. And the code for that is, let me know your thoughts in the comments if they're flattering and kissing my ass and telling me how wonderful I am, how thin I look, how I'm looking young, everything I bought is wonderful, everything I put together is great. Like, we just want flattery? Is that the whole, what's the, this is supposed to be genuine exchange of, of, of enthusiasm and it's meant to be light and fun, except this video. <laughs> this is the only time, I promise you. So I just, yeah, I just think that um, she needs to not be rude to people and understand the basics of how you conduct yourself in a professional environment. I went into Hermes, I spoke to this lady, as I say, on three occasions. 
and by the third occasion she was sort of saying if you ever want one of our real classic hard to get bags come and see me and I promise I will source that for you and it won't be a problem because we developed a rapport and I think she wanted she thought it would really make my make me happy and she was also having a she felt respected and valued as someone who's serving the public. I made her feel like that. And so therefore it's like, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. There was no reference to, well, you should, if you buy this, it will help you. You know, none of that. Now I'm not saying everybody has that experience. I'm just saying, if you are polite, courteous, concise, that's another big issue. You're very clear about what you want and you look them in the eye and you say, if you get a 28 return in a neutral color, in the next two years if you let me know i'd be very interested and then you leave them alone you are much more likely to get a bag than if you mount a harassmenty style campaign to get what you want that's that's all i'm going to say i've probably gone too far already but i've i can't edit this and reshoot it anymore okay the chanel thing i'm going to be a lot more brief on the second two points because they're not as contentious on the chanel thing It's all the same as with the Hermes thing. If you don't like the game that the brand is offering, then just back off. That's all you can do. You can't change it. So for me, I love, I'm going to get one here. I'm wearing this tonight. I absolutely love, and I really must go in a minute. I really love this bag. It is my medium large classic flap in caviar. It's a treasured possession rather than one of many, many, many. I just, that's just not my style anymore. I'm not on the hunt to keep building my collection. I'm really happy with where it is. I've said this before, I may add bags in the future that I've got a particularly high price point, but it will be a very considered purchase for a special occasion or, you know, not every six months like I used to do it. This at the time was already a really high price for what it is. And um, now it's almost, not quite, but probably almost double what I paid for it. And at that price, I'm happy to walk away and say, no, it's not for me. So, yes, the Chanel price rises. There are lots of angry videos saying how insensitive it is for them to increase their prices in the pandemic um, and blah, blah, blah. But I kind of I feel like maybe I'm just losing my interest or I'm, I don't know. I used to be more engaged in the kind of conflict of it all. But I can back up now and just say, do you know what it is? If Chanel wants seven, six or seven thousand for this, good luck to them. I'm not paying it. If somebody else wants to pay it and then they're happy that they get their bag, fine. If somebody else is like, I've saved up five thousand and now they've suddenly put it up a thousand and I can't get it. That's a shame. Either save up some more or go and get it pre-loved or vintage or look at something similar from another brand. I just, there's a theme running through this video and is it and it is that these things don't matter that much. They're lovely to look at. I'm going out for dinner tonight. None of the people I'm going out for dinner with have got one of these. They'll all ooh and ah over it. It's pretty. One of them is a nurse. She doesn't have that kind of disposable income and she wouldn't choose to spend it on this. And she's probably more sane than me to have that opinion. I get that. Um... They're not handmade, they're pretty mass produced. They're not the same quality that they used to be back in the day. That's not just a myth, that's true. This is not gold plated anymore. It's pretty, it's classic. I really wanted it. I really enjoy using it for special occasions. But there comes a cutoff where I'm like, that's not worth it. I paid £4,000 for this bag, I don't mind telling you. I'm not ashamed, we could afford it. I wanted it for more than five years and then I got it. I was prepared to wait for my time. Um, it's a special occasion bag for me. It's not an everyday bag for me. I love it. If I hadn't got it then and then by the time we decided to buy it, it was whatever it is now, six, seven thousand. I know in my mind that I just say, OK, I'm, I'm priced out. I'm out. But I'm not going to criticise anyone else who wants to get it. I don't think it represents a good value anymore. None of these things are good value in the first place, but you know what I mean? You should be paying for the craftsmanship, the heritage, the leather, the skill, and then a bonus on top for the brand recognition, for the prestige. It's now gone all out of whack. That formula doesn't add up for me anymore. 
so I probably won't buy any bags from Chanel going forward it, or it's you'd be surprised if you see me revealing a Chanel bag I'd have to fall so hard and really love the color the leather the shape it's something I've just I'm like oh god I've really fallen for that and I talked to my husband we decide to get it if we can get it because it's probably seasonal or whatever um but I yeah I just I've bought in in the last two years I've bought a brooch and an SLG whereas I used to buy several Chanel items a year I don't do that anymore and that's just my take on where it is it, it's not about complaining and they shouldn't be doing it and it's 20 percent. they can do what they want um they can do what they want it's a very live and let live opinion same as the Hermes thing I would love to have a Kelly a neutral greyish beigey off-white or grey or whatever Kelly retour. I think it's a beautiful bag. The Birkin doesn't really appeal to me because it's just a top handle and I just, it's not practical for my lifestyle. But I'm not going to embark on a Hermes journey. i got to stay neutral and have a take it or leave it attitude or it'll just be something that I get obsessed and consumed about. I don't want to do that. So if I'm ever in London and I go in and ask, I might give them my details. And if in a couple of years they call me, I'll be like, hey, that's a bonus. What a treat. I might go and get the bag. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. That's what I think is a healthy place to be. Same with Chanel. I'm really grateful I've got a few pieces that I really love, that I want to hang on to. The pieces that don't work out for me, my, like my reissue, I ended up selling. I thought it would be the perfect bag for me. It, I just didn't like it as much as the classic flap. And I, and I didn't think it was an amazingly well-made one. It was more soft and unstructured even than I was prepared for. I let it go because it was a lot of money for what it was. Um, I think Me Likey Too is right. The seasonal, more unusual things are slightly better cost for what you get. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. And then finally, with Louis Vuitton, they've like discontinued the things like this. Your basic, inverted commas, canvas pieces are very thin on the ground. They're either permanently discontinued or just not in great supply or availability and apparently they really want to push the capucines and the leather bags and all the rest of it i have one leather bag my pochette mati back here in Ompron. i love the Ompront. i'm not mad about the new leather with the big blown up monogram it's just a bit in your face for me i don't know about the quality or how well made or how soft and luxurious that leather is because i haven't seen it in person do i think that they are utterly phasing out canvas of course they're not it's a huge global business and if you look I don't have the data but if you look at the percentage of sales that is keepals neverfuls speedies slgs key holders wallets in canvas they're not going to completely get rid of them because that's probably a bigger chunk of their sales than these leather stuff that they're trying to promote but is there a general trend towards higher price points because they're luxury leather bags? Probably. And secondly, um, they're probably going to bring that back, but with a leather tabs and fancier zipper and and you know that was around three hundred pounds. And I think they are trying to knock out their more low priced things. Like I have the. Pusha SSY monogram. I paid about £300 for that. It's now like 700 You can't get it. And they have the multi Pusha for double that for 1500 or something. They want to steer you towards the more expensive things. That's the strategy. But are they completely killing off every single... They're not going to get rid of speedies and never fools. They're classic. So associated with the identity of the brand. They're not doing that. They're just rejigging. And people complain like, oh, well, I'm going to leave Louis Vuitton if they're only having these more expensive things. Again, with all of this, it's luxuries. It's not necessities. You don't need any of it. You just want it. I'm the same. That's life. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.